Although graduate entry medicine is the most competitive way to get into what is often the most competitive course in the UK, grad applicants usually are left the most in the dark about what is the best way to apply. In this video and in the series, I'm going to give you a comprehensive guide that's going to inform your decision when applying to graduate medicine in the UK. We're gonna look at all the GEM courses, help you decide which one is best for you to choose based on your individual background. And also at the end, we're going to look at the biggest mistake that GEM applicants make. You can check out the full series here, but otherwise today, we're gonna to cover all these things in the video. So before we go into courses, a few things to note. Firstly, to remember that although you're applying as a postgrad, when you're looking in UCAS, this is classed as an undergraduate course. As we said, it is one of the most competitive ways to get into medicine in the UK, with 34 applicants for every GEM spot. So this is why the information today that we're gonna tell you is key to making sure you get your application right and secure that place. There's currently a shortage of doctors in the UK, so the government are trying to do whatever they can to make as many entry points to get more doctors in. We're particularly short of GPs and most GEM applicants tend to go down the GP route. So let's dive into the courses and quickly just before I show you all of them just to note that each year due to the funding which is sometimes a bit weird some universities will drop in and out of this list. So Imperial for example this year aren't offering a GEM course whereas historically they have done. So here's the list of all the GEM courses available in the UK and next to them the number of spots available for each. Now here are the ones that require the GAMSAT, here are the ones that require the UCAT, here are the ones that accept international students, and then here are the ones that accept non-science degrees for those of you who haven't done a biomed or similar degree. Out of the ones I've just mentioned, let's talk about a few that are a little bit different and require special mention. Firstly, the Oxbridge Universities. Oxford GEM requires BMAT and it's the only of the GEM courses that requires that exam. And Cambridge actually doesn't require an exam at all. So it's incredibly competitive, especially with your academic accolades and CV when coming to apply. So be sure that you are uber competitive if you're going to use a spot applying to that particular course. Cardiff University, although they do have a GEM course, it is only eligible to those who have sat some what they call feeder courses, which is essentially a select few courses throughout Welsh universities designed to feed people into the GEM course. To make things a bit easier for you, I've made you a table that you can download in the description. Looking at it, if you look at the international column, you'll see that there are a couple of universities that are yes, but next to international, which means that yes, they do take internationals, but only people from select backgrounds and certain things that you have to meet. Therefore, I'd recommend that if you fall into that category, you call that particular university if you're interested in applying to them. There are also a couple of special circumstances that people might want to know about. So for example, if you hold a non back bachelor's degree, like say if you're a paramedic, for example, wanting to apply to medicine, the only GEM course that would accept your qualification is Newcastle. However, you can apply to a certain amount of undergrad unis, which are only Plymouth, Exeter, and Kent and Medway School. Pretty much all the GEM courses require at least a 2-1 degree. However, Nottingham is the exception, which their GEM course allows people in with a 2-2, and Plymouth undergraduate does allow a 2-2 as well. However, if you do have a merit level at master's degree, that also trumps any of those and they accept that as well in all of the GEM courses. Quickly for international applicants, a few things that you need to bear in mind. Firstly, you need to make sure that your qualification from your country meets the requirements of eligibility for the universities. The best way is to speak to the universities directly and tell them what qualifications you have. Otherwise, there's the UK National Recognition Information Centre, which can help you get some information about your degree and how it translates typically. Usually, you will have to get your degree transcribed or your qualifications transcribed which usually is a small fee. Applications are done on a tier four visa and you have to show that you have a good level of English proficiency. This is usually with an IELTS of a level of about 7.5 or above, or maybe even an English GCSE of six or above. I would recommend that you do this early on in your application, not only because it's required anyway, so you're gonna to have to do it, but also if you gain the skills of English proficiency from doing that course, they will translate very nicely and carry forward to helping you write a better personal statement, understand the UCAT or GAMSAT exams better so that you can perform better, and ultimately when you come to interview, be able to deliver and speak English better with your interviewer. Funding varies from course to course, and it's actually going to be the subject of my next video, which you can check out in this playlist. Essentially, you can get it from the British Council website or looking at the UCAS website. So when considering which medical school to actually go for, I would recommend the following five ways of deciding. First is eligibility. So here are some of the requirements for all of the universities which you can flick through. And actually below in the description, I've made a PDF that you can download and look at these yourself and review. Then I would say, look at the work experience requirements and how you align with these. 
Can you fund it and what funding is available to you? What the teaching style of the university is and is it something that would suit you? And finally, the location because you actually have to enjoy where you live. And the final one I would also consider is the aptitude test that you have to sit. Because sitting one of these is tough, let alone two. And do you have the capacity to do both and get the high level of score that's required to get into GEM? So I'm not gonna talk too much about aptitude tests here because I've made an entire playlist for the UCAT which you can check out here. And people have scored really highly just from watching those videos alone. Also, I've made a separate video on the GAMSAT, which you can watch here, that's gonna help you score highly as well. The only thing that I will say for these aptitude tests is when you're applying to GEM, which is incredibly competitive, you really do need to be getting a very high score to stand the chance of being invited to interview for most of the GEM courses. So when people look at the UCAT, they look at deciles typically. I would argue that for most GEM UCAT universities, you need to be getting above the first decile to even stand the chance of being invited to interview. Same with the GAMSAT unis really, you need to be getting in the high 50s to be in with a good chance of being invited to interview and getting offered a place. So before I hit you with the most common mistake that people make, let's look a bit about choosing the right university that's suited to your application strengths. It's really important to play to the university that works best for you and your circumstances. Typically, that's going to be divided into three things academia and research, your ability to perform well on the aptitude tests and interview, and then finally, your level of work experience. Some of the universities really value experience, so they'll ask you to fill out a roles and responsibilities form, which just basically gives you a bit of space to expand upon the things that you've written in your personal statement. So typically what you can do is directly cut and paste things across from that and just use the word count to expand on them a little bit further. This is why I really advocate keeping something that I call an information bank. You can check out a video here which is going to be a key thing that you can do now that way down the line is going to massively impact your chances of success. Okay so finally as promised let's get to the biggest myth that people have when applying to GEM. A lot of applicants think that it's a really wise tactic to do a safe fourth undergrad choice which means that they're going to apply to the five-year course instead of the GEM because they think it gives them a better chance. What they don't realize is that universities actually don't allocate you in the pool compared to all the other undergrads. So you're not competing for the same amount of spaces as all the undergrad places that are available for that course. So let's take a hypothetical situation with some imaginary numbers. Let's say for example, Southampton University to pick one at random has, I don't know, 200 places on their five-year course. Of that, they might only allocate 20 of those, so 10% to graduate applicants, versus actually on their GEM course, they have 48 places. So although you think it's a safe option to apply to the five-year course, it actually you actually have less chance because you'll have a lot more people applying to that and less places available to you than actually the 48 that are on the GEM course. Now those numbers don't match up exactly, but this is where people kind of fall behind by thinking that by going for the five-year course, that they actually stand a better chance when sometimes the numbers don't always work out like that. What I'm not saying is that you should not absolutely apply to an undergrad course or a five-year course, but it's not the safe bet that people think it is and something that you should consider before putting that as part of your selection of the four universities available to you. The other thing to consider is that once you start applying to the five-year course, things do get a little bit weird. The first thing is that funding is no longer available to you the same way that it is for the GEM course, so you will have to self-fund that. Also, the requirements change a little bit. Usually when you're applying to a GEM course, most universities will say that as long as you've got the degree requirement, so the 2-1 for most universities, that they don't worry about anything that you've kind of done before that. However, if you then apply as a graduate to an undergraduate course, they then start going back and looking at things like your A-levels and making sure that you've maybe got GCSE maths and English. And that's when things start getting a little bit complicated if you didn't get particularly good grades at that stage. Just to give you an idea of how complicated it gets for some circumstances once you drop down from the GEM application to the five year, I'm gonna show you Kiel's requirements and just see how crazy they can be. So you can see for Kiel that home applicants take the UCAT for the five year, the BMAT if they're an international, the GAMSAT if they have the required degree but not the A-levels or GCSE required. At the end here it says, graduate applicants must also take the UCAT BMAT as required, taking the GAMSAT is a substitute for the A-level and or some GCSE requirements and does not exempt you from the UCAT or BMAT. See how 
confusing this can be once you drop out of the gem application. The reason that we have the success that we do on the future.coaching program is because we guide people one-on-one -on -one for their individual circumstances and help demystify and navigate through all of this stuff. We've actually had some amazing results with that. Taking that number, as I said before, of 34 applicants to one gem spot and having incredible success with getting people on. So if you wanna check that out, you can have a look at this video here. Otherwise, I recommend that you check out the playlist here where I do a full gem guide. Thank you for watching today and I'll see you over in one of those videos.